you know, I have one picture that my dad still has where every major league scout is sitting at my game with the radar guns out and I'm pitching. And uh, at that point I realized like, I, I'm gonna play baseball. こんにちはナビゲーターのはじめです今回も2017年にシーズンそして日本シリーズの MVP を獲得したベースボールプレーヤーデニス・サパテ選手のインタビューをお届けします今回はまず今注目している日本人選手について聞きましたそれではどうぞ The number one and most obvious is Otani、uh, Shohei just to play against him there see his Um, his talent on the field as a pitcher and also as a hitter. You know, I got to face him as, as a pitcher when he was hitting.、Uh, he was an all around stud, five tool player. And you'd get in the box and be like, this guy can just do it all. And you really had to, you know, pitch him smart. Uh, and, then, and then the next day, he'll start on the mound and he's throwing 100, and you're just like, this is ridiculous, you know?、Uh, I used to follow Masahiro Tanaka a lot. You know, I got to face、um, Hideki Matsui. I got to face、uh, Ichiro when I played in the big leagues. So, but the guys now, Otani is the only one I really keep up with.、Um, in other sports, you know, I love watching golf. I love watching what、uh, Masayami did.、Uh, what was it, the Masters?、Um, you just see how. How much joy that brings. You know, that was the announcing when they announced that. You know, it was almost like everyone in the country was watching it, just like the World Baseball Classic. Being in Japan and then watching the World Baseball Classic on TV, where you'd go to watch it at a bar and 3,000 people are trying to get into one place just to watch it at two in the morning,、uh, is, is you just see that they love their sports, they love their country, they love to support them. And,、uh, I, I'll support Otani. I'll support any Japanese guy that comes over here because I know what it's like to go play not in your home country and to, to see what these guys, I know what they're going through here in America. And、uh, I just wish them the best and, and hope they enjoy it as much as I enjoyed my 11 years there. Yeah, Sapata 選手もやはり大谷選手に注目しているんですね。次は、Sapata 選手の子供時代について、また野球との出会いについて。そしてなぜ野球選手を目指すようになったのかについて伺いました。Didn't have the greatest、uh, childhood as far as parents. I have two alcoholic parents.、Um, you know, struggled with that. Raised in New York in a small little apartment.、Uh, when we moved to Arizona, my parents got divorced. So there was that of going between house to house.、Um, but I always stayed out of trouble. I got straight A's in school,、um, straight A's in high school. And I just knew that baseball was my out. If I was going to do anything in life, it was going to be baseball. And so I didn't want to screw that up. I knew early on when I was about five or six, I wanted to be a professional baseball player. And for me, it was seeing the men on TV and the sports cars, and they had money and everyone wanted to be them. And, you know, so that was my dream. It's like, that's what I'm going to do when I get older. And it necessarily wasn't because I loved the game so much. But I saw what came along with it, and I thought that was my happiness, right? I saw you know, all these things that I was like, I saw my parents struggle and always fight over money and, and paying bills. I figured if I was just wealthy because of baseball, that I would be happy and I wouldn't fight over anything.、Um, and so my thing was, I'm going to play baseball, I'm going to make money, and I'm going to be happy. And,、um, and we can talk about this more later, but happiness isn't money, isn't. Playing professional sports,、uh, and I found that out, you know, 10 years ago. But、uh, childhood was, wasn't the worst, but it wasn't the best. I saw a lot of awful things, but also got to see a lot of cool stuff.、Um, my dad was very supportive with baseball from an early age. He, he worked really hard just to provide for us. We lived, you know, they lived paycheck to paycheck. But yeah, my dad always tells a story, and he, he's a New Yorker, so he kind of exaggerates sometimes. but Uh, he says, when I was three or four, I'd pick up a ball and I would throw it, and it would always be just this power ball, and I could hit. And he just right away he knew.、Uh, I remember playing coach pitch one year, and I didn't get out. I think I hit like 30 something home runs. It was a joke. It, you know, one of those things where people saw it. And then as I got to 
you know, uh, Little League. I was on the uh, majors team when I was 10, playing with guys that were three years older than me. And then every year you can just see like, okay, this, there's a chance. There's a chance. Um, I got to my, my high school years, probably my sophomore year, and I realized, what am I going to do, right? I didn't love school. There wasn't one subject that I was just like, yes, I want to do this. You know, I thought about maybe being a cop where if baseball maybe never worked out. I probably would have tried to do something in law enforcement. But by the time I was a junior and all those scouts were coming around and it hits you like, hey, you're actually pretty good. And you can, you know, I had one picture that my dad still has where every major league scout is sitting at my game with the radar guns out and I'm pitching. And uh, at that point, I realized like, I, I'm going to play baseball. And at that point, that's all I cared about. And I knew that that's what it was going to be. That's when in college, you start to see my school go down a little bit. Grades started to suffer because I was like, I'm just here just to play. I'm not here to get a degree. I think my degree is going to be baseball. And um, by the time I was a sophomore, I was forced to sign my contract because I couldn't go back to school. I, I, I needed so many credit hours to make up to play, be eligible for my junior year that I wouldn't have been able to do it. And so I was pretty much forced to sign. One of the coolest stories, my dad drove trucks for roadway and he used to, in spring training in Arizona, he would deliver the Rawlings gloves to, to the, the main Rawling rep. Um, and his name was Jimmy. And so, you know, every once in a while, Jimmy would be like, hey, give this to your son. Yeah, I was like 11. Then it was like th when I was 14. Well, then I got to the big leagues and Jimmy comes in the clubhouse with Rawlings and he was like, I'm here, I'm going to give you a glove. But this time it's not while you're a little kid, you're actually a professional. So I thought that was the, the coolest thing uh, that this guy, I kind of followed my career all the way from when I was little until I made it to the big leagues. So, um, but a, not an awful childhood, just, just things that as a dad now, I don't want my daughters to go through. You know, my wife and I both recognize the mistakes that our parents both made on both sides, and we, we want to do better. サウテ選手は小さい頃から特別な選手として育ってきたわけではなく、本当に苦しい時期も経験されてきたんですね。前回は野球のコアについてお聞きしましたが、今回はサウテ選手の人生のコアについてお聞きしました。Well, how about I read you my core scripture right here,、uh, and it's Romans 4, 7 and 8. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not count his sin. Like, praise God, hallelujah, amen. Baseball and, and professional sports in general have a way to corrupt your, your soul in a way that、um, sometimes people don't get through that, you know? So early on in the big leagues, I was very selfish. I, I was the one making money. I told my wife, you take care of the kid. I'll be out. I went out. I would drink. You know, I was prideful. I wanted, to, I wanted girls to come up to me. I wanted people to be like, there's Dennis and, and buy drinks for everyone. I wanted to be the spotlight.、Uh, as I got farther and farther into my marriage, I, my marriage was falling apart. God brings me to Japan,、uh, thinking that would help me get away from everything. And then you go to Japan and you're put on this pedestal, right?、And、so, my first year, I'm having all this success and I'm going out and partying still. Nothing was changing. And I remember Jada going home in 2011.、Uh, we had Kinsley, who was two, almost three, maybe turned three that year. And then Farah was born that spring. Farah was actually born on March 10th. So,、uh, in, in Arizona, which is March 11th in Japan. So, she was born on the big earthquake.、Uh, And I remember them going home. And I remember going out the next, that night with、uh, one of the other players, got trashed. I'm out till all hours of the night. You know, you're having success and you're, and you're thinking you're on top of the world and you can do whatever you want. And I remember waking up the next day and just being miserable. And Jada had left her Bible. She grew up、uh, not in a Christian home either. She always had her Bible and she left it there. And I remember picking it up. I remember overwhelming just grief and sorrow, and I just bawled. I must have cried for three hours. I remember calling her 
I remember writing an email to all my family, like telling them what I just experienced, that I, I, I'm done with my life the way it was. I'm, I'm a Christian now. I want to follow Christ. And, and I think the core of that is knowing that he did it for us, that our sins are forgiven and we have peace with God because of what he did on that cross for us. And man, I didn't know what that meant 10 years ago when I first became a believer. I just knew that I, I wanted a, a changed life. My life was in shambles. And I just feel like now looking back, like, man, God, thank you so much because you say, he saved me from my own wretchedness and, the, and the opened my eyes and changed my heart to see the truth in life and what we're here and that we're all made in God's image is only the only thing that matters. サワテ選手の人生において、またプレイヤーとして大切にしている部分がたくさん詰まっていましたね。サワテ選手は東日本大震災を経験していますが、2016年には熊本地震も経験しています。そこで実際に経験したことについて、またその辛い体験の中での出
<laughs> you can see I'm so exhausted. I'm so tired, but uh, we got it done. And so uh, this is that, this is what it is. I'll keep this thing forever.審査を共に経験したからこそできる絆を感じることができましたね。最後に、澤田選手からファンの方々へメッセージをいただいています。the, on Twitter, the well wishes and, and the encouragement to keep fighting and battling. I thank you from my heart. Um, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful to God that I, I actually got to go to Japan and be among you all there and to live there day in and day out and to enjoy some of the beauties of your country and the food and, and the people. I, I was always met, whether it was at a Hori Park or at a restaurant in Tokyo or or somewhere walking in Osaka, I was always met with such graciousness and love. And so for that, I thank you. I thank you for allowing me to be a part of something so cool for the last 11 years. I pray that it's not the end, but uh, if it is, you can bet on my wife and my kids coming back there and uh, visiting for sure as much as we can. So thank you, Kambate.今回なんと澤田選手から日本の方々に向けてプレゼントをいただいています。それはこちらです。澤田選手のユニフォーム、サイン入りです。こちらは2016年のオールスターのユニフォーム コメント欄に番組への感想とプレゼントをお書きください。抽選で5名の方にプレゼントをお届けします。締め切りは次回配信日2021年7月9日金曜日23時59分までです。皆さんのコメントをお待ちしています。次回もお楽しみに。それではま